We'll be in Romans 6, we'll read verses 1 through 14. By the way, it's got two headings. This part of the book, it's called Freedom from Sin's Grasp. Sin's power is broken. That's how it's entitled. In my Bible, yours may have something, something similar. Romans 6, verses 1 through 14. That works too. So here we go. Because you see, this Paul is writing to the church at Rome, and he starts off with the question, and then he he answers it. He says, "Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of His wonderful grace?" Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Because in the rest of it, he, he kind of sums it up again. And then the end of chapter 6, it's probably a verse we all know, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Does the world, here's the common question, does the world take God seriously? No. Sadly, no. Then do all Christians take God seriously? Same answer. No. But we all need to take God seriously, and that means taking His Word. Seriously, everything that He says from Genesis 1-1 through the end of the book of Revelation. You know, it's all true. It either has happened, or it still yet to come. Of course, we know the book of Revelation, and we're looking forward to what? Trumpet sounds, cause of earth. Jesus comes down. That, no, we're still looking forward to. There's too many, even those who claim Jesus, people don't read, they don't study, they don't obey. That's the word of warning for all of us, self-included. We have to read, we have to study, we have to obey. Sin separates us from God, and for some it's an ongoing issue. And ultimately, those who die in their sins, those who die not knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior, well, their, their sin will separate them from God for eternity. It doesn't just separate you, you now from God and you sin against someone else. There's a rift there that has to be mended. That's what sin, sin does. It, it separates. If I sin against you, there's going to be a, 
a rift there. Our relationship's going to be broken. As sin does with our relationship with God, too. It, it, it's broken. It has to be repaired. Those who are slaves to sin prefer the perceived pleasures it can, often, it can offer now. So sin does now. Hey, that's what temptation does, right? Hey, this looks good. This feels good. This is pleasurable. Do it. It's okay. Won't hurt you. Well, that's all. All the devil has to do to, to get to get in. Just you got it makes you doubt. Did God really say? That's right. When when he tempted Adam and Eve, did God really say? Does God really want you not to have this? Does He really want you not to do this? It gets your head thinking, yeah, I probably do deserve that. And then there we go, down the path of, of sin. Yeah, sin does offer pleasures now, but it will we'll suffer for them later, be it this life and or the, the next. Well, many do know better if you really press them, but they are too stubborn to repent and make Jesus the Lord of their life. A lot of people probably do want a Savior. Would you want to spend eternity in torment? I don't think anyone would say, yeah, I would love to, to be on fire forever and be thirsty forever and be in darkness forever. I don't really think anyone would ever want that. But they don't want to give up control of their lives to somebody else. Savior, yes. Give me the fire insurance. That's what people call it. You've heard it before, you see some snickers, some smiles, like, yeah. But they don't want to give up control of their life. Sure, someone else, tell me what to do, guide me, tell me what they want me to do with my life, who they want me to talk to, who I, who I can. And people don't want to do that. But then, there's people that do know better, but there's people that don't. It says, there's people that haven't read this book, there's people that don't, they don't know. Does it make them innocent? Just it's more pressing for us to take the truth to them. We have to be do more and be better at sharing the gospel, showing people a better way to live, a better way to love. It's people that don't have the Lord, that don't have a church family to lean on, what do they turn to? Anything and everything else, right? They'll seek out Substances, they'll seek out relationships in places they shouldn't. And, then, and where are we to offer them our... You know, we're not there. We've got to do better at reaching out to these people. You don't have to do X, Y, and Z. There's a better way. We all know people, we've got friends and family and neighbors and those we work with. We all know people that aren't saved, right? It's like, yeah, I know people. Who, and who can reach them? Me, you, us. I don't work where you work. I don't live. Your neighbors aren't my neighbors. We all got people that we can talk to. Let's go back to the beginning. In verse 1, Paul does, he asks a question. Shall we go on sinning? Who is Paul writing to? Church. He's writing to the church. In Rome, he's writing to believers, to Christians, to the saints of Rome. So he's asking believers, shall you keep on sinning since you know the Lord now? That's who he's asking it. So we're asking us, should you guys, self-included, should we go on sinning since we have Jesus? Of course, Paul here says, uh, of course not. I don't mind, it could be... Print that in all caps. Oh, of course not. He's, he's yelling at them. Don't do it. Paul answers this question in three ways. Three reasons they should say no to sin. The first one is because they are dead to sin. The second one is because they are alive in Christ. And the third one is because they are free from sin. They're free from sin's power. 
Because people are free to sin, are they not? Yeah. But there's a catch. You can do whatever you want, say whatever you want, think whatever you want, but can you ever outrun it? No. Eventually, it will catch up with you. You think, oh, I did something years ago, and then, you know, it might, it'll rear its ugly head again. But you're right, if you, uh, anyone ever ran for public office? I've not. But people always dig, digging up dirt, right? So and so did something 45 years ago, and now, sorry, they're, they're disqualified for office. Remember, they've got skeletons in the closet they don't want popping out. It goes back to, Sinful things show back up. If we're squeaky clean, who's got who can say anything bad about us? Right? We mentioned that so last week. If there's if there are no skeletons in my closet, I can just leave it open. Right? Look, it's it's fine. We can't outrun it. We can't escape sin. At least not on our own. That's why we need Jesus. He is the only escape. He's the only way we can avoid the consequences and escape the clutches of sin. Of course, we read the end of chapter 6. The wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Can't get away from him. He must be our Lord if we're to escape. Even after finding Christ or accepting Him or getting saved, however we word it, we know what we mean. When we, when we go from sinner to saint, sin's still there, is it not? Temptation's still there. But that's if it wasn't, right? That's as, as soon as, whoo, come up out of the water. Whoo, no more temptation. Wouldn't that be great? Oh, me? Oh, no, I'm never tempted with anything. But that's not how it is. We're tempted all the time. I said before, what I'm tempted with may not be anything to you. You're like, why in the world could you not say no to that? That's silly. Or vice versa. You want to be tempted to something, I'm like, why in the world would someone even want that? But our bodies know what they want. The enemy knows what buttons to push, what to throw at us to get us off course. I've got to say no. It's easy to say no. Not always. Especially not if I'm just relying on, if I rely on, on this body to always say no. Maybe I'm good for a few days. Maybe a few weeks. But that temptation is going to keep knocking. Hey. Hey. I'm still out here. And then if we let our stuff, yeah, we'll probably open that door. Hey, temptation, come on in. And they're like, why in the world did I do that? Why did I say that or think that? Or why did I go over there? Because we were not letting Jesus lead all the time. Through his power, we can say no to anything and everything. Because when we do give in to sin, at that moment we're saying, I want that more than I want you. You being God. That should be a sober thought, right? When temptation is knocking, it's saying, do you want me right now or... Do you want the Lord? Hmm, let's see. And that's what we're pretty much deciding on. Sober in thought. Once we get saved, we have two options. We can grow in Christ or we fade away. Jeff said it many times. We, we're on the, we're going up or we're going back down. We don't plateau. We're going toward God we're getting more like him, growing in, growing in faith, or we're heading back the, the other way. Both take time, both take effort, or maybe you can say lack thereof. Our priorities matter, our intentions matter. Do I want to go forward? Which means I've got to put in the time, right? I've got to read, I've got to pray, I've got to be with my church family. I've got to be serving and giving and there's a lot of things we have to do. It does take time and, and it may take us away from other things. But I want to go do... But what about 
Not at the expense of our faith. Yeah, those other things in and themselves are not bad. But they should never come at the expense of our faith. If you are growing, then I say keep it up, even if that progress is slow. Like you ever been on a diet? It was like, I've been on a diet for five minutes, and where are the results? I drank one glass of water and ate an apple. Come on. No, it's what we want. We want immediate results, which is still, it's, it's the world we live in, right? I can pop things in the microwave. I can go around a window. Now then I can just look, look at whatever I want. Results, results, results. And when they don't happen right away, we get discouraged, don't they? We've got to keep on that upward trajectory to get even closer to God. It may take time. Because God prunes us. He, he, he helps us grow. He slowly takes things away and replaces them with other things. But if you're on the other side of the mountain, you're going down. Of course, it's not too late. It's never too late as long as we have breath in our lungs. But reverse course. We can repent again. We can head back towards God. When we think, oh man, I have moved a thousand miles away from him. That one step back, where is he? Right there. I've been waiting on you, is what he'll say. Glad you're back. When the prodigal son left, what was the father doing every day? Looking and waiting for his son to come back down the road. And when he did, he was happy he ran to him. Made a fool of himself running down the road. Because men of that day, of course, they didn't run. They wore robes. Had to tucked it up under you like you're wearing a big diaper and he took off. That's the truth. That's what it was. It was undignified for a man to show his legs and, and run around. Little kids did that. Grown men know better. There should be no compromise to sin. We should always say no because we died to it. I left you. I don't want that again. And we've all left things. You know your history better than anybody else. You know what you used to want and used to do and used to think and used to desire. It's done. I don't want that. He said, we died to sin in baptism. When we said yes to Jesus, that meant we would obey him and everything. Just like marriage vows. Those have to be taken seriously, don't they? Or the marriage will end, and that will end badly. How many marriages that you know of that have ended that have ended peacefully? I'm at a loss. You might see it on TV, and we think we've watched a few TV shows where people have ha, have split, and then they're, they're still buddies. I'm like, that wasn't happen. You ever seen the Reba show? She lives next door to her ex husband. You ever seen that show? I'm like, that ain't happening. Still, we, if we break, yes, Jesus, I, I want you. Please save me. I will serve you. And then we never do anything for him. I'm going to go back to how I was. Pointless. We must fight sin. We must resist temptation as long as we live. As long as we live. Temptation will keep coming after us, but with the Lord we have grace, we have mercy, we have His power that enables us to say no. On our own again, maybe, maybe our willpower can get us through a few days, but eventually it'll break. We'll give in. Are we forced to say no? Now, again, the, just because we're believers doesn't mean temptation leaves us alone. God doesn't force us to say no, but he gives us the power to say no. We're even told in Scripture to flee from sin, to run away if needed. We must seek the Lord out and use the resources we have. We have prayer. We have the Bible. We have a church family to overcome. I, was, I don't know if I've told this story or not, but I had a, I had a friend in college. You, know, you, have an, you had, a, had an accountability partner. 
If, if something was tempting you, if something was enticing you, call this other person. No matter when it is. So you won't be alone. It's, easy, it's, it's easier to sin if you're by yourself, right? No one knows. God knows. So you call somebody. Sometimes it, it could be middle of the night, you get a phone call. Yeah, I'm struggling. When you talk to the person, you, or you go over to their room. Sometimes we may have to do that. You, there's numbers in your in your bulletin, right? Use them. Do 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 do. Hi. I need help. And there's nothing wrong with that. Reach out for help. Sometimes we don't do that enough. I need help. We say no to sin because we live with Christ. And to go back to our example. If we claim Jesus, but we don't live like him, that's a horrible example for the world, right? I don't need to be a Christian. You live like I do, or huh, you're worse than I am. I don't even do some of the things you do. We're studying Hebrews on, on Wednesdays, and we'll get... I don't say. I would say soon. We'll get to it soon. We use soon loosely. Eventually, we'll get to chapter eleven. And chapter eleven is the faith hall of fame. Is what it's been been called. All those people lived it. And it'd be great if it was, if if there was a, a, an addendum. Let's let's rewrite it for today. One if, if if someone looked at us and said, you know, that person should be should be listed with these people too. They live it. They walk it. They don't just talk it. They, they do these things. When they say they're going to pray for you, they'll do it. They'll give you the shirt off their back. They'll give you their last bit of food out of their cabinet. Sure, they'll let you sleep on their couch or whatever it is. So you don't just talk a good game. We have to do it. We live with Christ and we have to show it. What he did, that should be what we do. What he, what he didn't do, of course, we should avoid too. Because we live with Christ each day, we're able to say no. A lot of things, it's, habits are, are easy to get into, right, and hard to break. We get in the habit of no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes to this. Yes, yes, yes to this. Get into those habits. If we're spending more time in this and more time in this and more time here and more time giving and serving and reaching out, of course, there's a lot less downtime, right? What is it about idle hands? Yeah. Then we say no to sin because we are liberated. We're free. One thing about living in this country, right? We like that thought. We are free. We don't answer to any other anybody else. We're we're free. We're free from <coughs> sin. We've all been caught in sin, even if man didn't see it, right? We've all done things, thought things, said things, and if we're honest with ourselves, we have to know that God sees everything. He's God. He knows everything. He knows everything I've ever thought. He knows everything I've ever said. He knows everything I've ever done. Since that in the case, our sin had us in trouble with God. It giant chasm sin had made. God is holy. He's pure. And that's what he desires in us. To be like him. He wants us to be better. The best we can be. Again, to be like him. Real quick, flip to uh, to First Peter. First Peter chapter one. Give you a moment to to find it. So it's always great when you just turn right to it. I was like two pages off. Like, oh. Those of you you may got the Bible with the indentions or the tabs. That's cheating. <laughs> That's cheating. Would not be eligible for Bible drills. 
Yeah, I've got it. I'm quick. I tease. But First Peter chapter 1, 13 through 16. This says, A call to holy living is the heading that I have. Peter writes, Think clearly and exercise self-control. Look forward to the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know when you better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God, who chose you, is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. Um, wow, right? Sounds tough, doesn't it? To be holy in everything you do. But that is a command. It may take time. Of course, the first step is getting saved. And then we have a lifetime of growth. Being freed from the power of sin... And then growing into who God wants us to be. Serving Him, doing the good works He has planned. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? We've been set free from the penalty of sin and the power of sin. When we're saved, yes, no longer is God holding that against us. Put yourself, before you were saved, you, said, you didn't know any better. Your body wanted what it wanted, and you just gave in. So, but now, however, it's a different story. We know better. We don't have to sin because Jesus has set us free and empowered us through his strength to overcome. It's all a matter of understanding this, living this, and applying these truths. And we're saying, where does the Spirit live? In. He's in here. He's, he's out there. How many times do I need to point, right? I think I've got everybody. We must lean on God to live right. Can't do it on my own again. We may struggle with temptation, but we must live like saints. I can't live like the world and expect the world to want to be one of us. Again, if, if, if I live like... the, the was it the heathen? The, we know what that means. If I'm living like them, they won't need anything to do because they'll think they're okay. Well, if that preacher is doing what I'm doing, I must be okay. Our example matters again. We must walk with God and grow daily to be like Him. We must love others and use what God has given us to serve. Yes, today is, yeah, we, Independence Day for our country. Also, we celebrate, of course, every Sunday, Independence Day from sin. How many, how many, I don't even know the number, however many Sundays ago it was, the Lord rose. And that broke death's grip, broke sin's grip. And that same power lives here. We can do it. Trust in God, lean on each other, and we'll make it through.